from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Cloud is dead. It's all going to the edge. Or is it? Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with Stu Miniman. Stu, where does this come from, this narrative that the cloud is over? Well, Dave, you know, cloud's had a good run, right? It's been over a decade, you know, Amazon's dominance in the marketplace. Uh, but Peter Levine uh, from Andreessen Horowitz uh, did an article where he said, you know, cloud is dead, the edge is killing the dead, uh, the edge is killing the cloud. Uh, and really we're talking about IoT, and IoT's huge opportunity. Uh, Wikibon, Dave, we've been tracking it for many years. We did, the, you know, the original forecast for the industrial internet. Um, and obviously there's going to be lots more devices at the edge, so huge opportunity, huge growth, intelligence all over the place. But in our viewpoint, Dave, it doesn't mean that cloud goes away. You know, we've been talking about distributed architectures now for a long time. Uh, you know, the cloud is is is, is really at the at the, the core of this. Um, you know, building services that surround the globe uh, li live in you know just hundreds of <laughs> places. Uh, you know, for for all of these companies, so um, it, it's nuanced and uh, just as. The cloud didn't overnight kill the data center and lots of discussion as to what lives in the data center. The, the edge does not you know, kill the cloud and it, it, it's really, uh, you know, we're seeing some major transitions pull and, and push uh, from some of these technologies. A lot of challenges and lots to dig into. So I, I read Peter Levine's piece. I thought it was very thought provoking and, and quite well done. Uh, and of course he's coming at that from the standpoint of a venture capitalist, right? Does he, do I want to start, you know, do I want to pour money into the trend that is now you know, the mainstream, or do I want to get ahead of it? So I think that's what that was all about. But here's my question, Stu, is, is in your opinion, will the activity that occurs at the edge, will it actually drive more demand from the cloud? So we're t today we're seeing the infrastructure as a service businesses growing at what, 35%? 40%? Sure, sure. Right. I mean, Amazon's growing at the, th you know, 35 to 40%. Uh, it, Google, Microsoft are growing, you know, double that uh, right now. So, but o overall, you're, you're, you're right. Yeah, okay. And so, and then of course the enterprise players are flat if they're, if they're lucky. So, my question is, is will the edge actually be a tailwind for the cloud, in your opinion? Yeah, so first, on your comment there, from an investment standpoint, totally can understand why, you know, edge is greenfield opportunity, lots of different places that I can place bets and probably can win, as opposed to, um, if, if I think that today, I'm going to compete against the hyperscale cloud guys, you know, they're pouring, you know, $10 billion, you know, a year into their infrastructure, they have, you know, huge massive deployment, so uh, the, the bar to entry is a lot higher. Um, I'm sorry, the second piece, was so, will the edge yeah. drive more demand for the cloud? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it does, Dave. Because you know, l let's take something like autonomous vehicles, something that we talk about. I need intelligence at the edge. I can't wait for some instruction to go back to the cloud uh, before my Tesla, you know, plows into an individual. I need to know that it's there. But the models themselves. Um, really, I've got all the compute in the cloud. Uh, I'm th this is where I'm going to train all of my models, uh, but I need to be able to update and push those to the edge. Uh, if I think about a lot of the industrial applications, you know, flying a plane is, you know, things need to happen locally, but all the anomalies and, you know, new things that we run into, there's certain pieces that need to be updated to the cloud. So, you know, it, it, there's, it, it's, it's kind of a multi-layered, if, if we look at how much data will there be at the edge? Well, there's probably going to be more data at the edge than there will be in the central cloud. But how much activity, uh, you know, how much compute do I need? How much, you know, uh, things do I need to actually work on? The cloud is probably going to be that central computer still. Um, and it's not just a computer, it's as I said, a distributed architecture. That's where, you know, I, I, when we looked at big data in the early days, Dave, when we can put those data lakes in the cloud, you know, I've got you know thousands or millions of compute cycles that I can throw at this at such a lower price and use that there, as opposed to at the edge, especially what kind of connectivity do I have? Am I isolated from all those other pieces? Um, if if you go back to my premise of we're building distributed architectures, the edge is still very early. How do I make sure I secure that? Do I have the network? Um, there's lots of things that I'm going to build in a, in a tiny little component and, and, and have that be there. Uh, and there's lots of hardware innovation going on at that edge too. Okay, so let's talk about how this plays out a little bit. And I, I think you're talking about a distributed model and it's really, 
to me, a distributed data model. The, the, the research analysts at Wikibon have, have, have envisioned this three-tier data model where you've got data at the edge, uh, which you may or may not persist. You've got some kind of you know, consolidation or aggregation layer um, where it's, you know, it's kind of in between the edge and the deep data center, and then you've got the cloud. Now that cloud can be an on-prem cloud or it could be you know, the public cloud. So that, that data model, how do you see that playing out with regard to the adoption of, of cloud, the morphing of cloud, and the edge, and the traditional data center. Yeah, I, we've been talking about intelligent devices at the edge for a couple decades now. I mean, I, I remember I built a house in like 1999, and the smart home was already something that people were talking about then. Today, uh, great, I've got, uh, you know, I've got my Nest if I have, I probably have, you know, smart assistants. Um, there's a lot of things I, I love. Yeah, I saw, saw on, 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 on Twitter today, somebody's talking like, oh, wait, I'm waiting for my light bulbs to update their firmware from the latest push. <laughs> so, um, some of it's coming, but, it's just this slow, gradual uh, adoption. So there's the consumer piece, and then there, there's the business aspect. So you know we are still really, really early in some of these you know exciting edge uses. Talk about the enterprise. They're all working on their strategy for how devices and how they're going to work through IoT. But you know this is not something that's going to happen overnight. It's 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 they're figuring out their partnerships. They're figuring out where they work, um, and that three-tiered model that you talked about is my, my cloud provider, absolutely is hugely important uh, for, for how I do that. And uh, I really see it, Dave, not as an or, but it's an and. So I need to understand, right, <laughs> where, where I collect my data, where certain aspects are going to live. Uh, and uh, the, you know, the public cloud players are spending a lot of time working on, uh, on that intelligence, uh, it, it, the intelligence layer. And Stu, I should mention, I mean, so far we're talking about Really, the infrastructure is a service layer. It comprises, you know, database and, and middleware. We haven't really addressed the the SaaS space, and and we're not going to go deep into that. But just to say, I mean, look, packaged software as we knew it is dead, right? SaaS is where all the action is. It's the highest growth area. It's the highest value area. So, you know, we'll cover that in, in, in other segments. So we're really talking about that, the the stack up to the middleware and the database, and obviously the infrastructure as a service. So when you think about the players here, let's start with AWS. You've been to, I think, every AWS reInvent, maybe with the exception of, of one. You've seen the evolution. I was just down in, in DC the other day, and they have this chart on the wall, which is their, their, their releases, their functional releases by year. It's just, it's overwhelming, you know, what they've done. So, they're obviously the leader. I saw a recent Gartner Magic Quadrant. It, it looked like, I tweeted, it looked like Ronnie Turcott, look, Turcott looking back on Secretariat from the Belmont and whatever it was, 1978, I think it was, <laughs> 31 lengths. I mean, massive domination in the infrastructure as a service space. What do you see going on? Yeah, so Dave, absolutely. Uh, today, the cloud is it's Amazon's market out there. Um, Interestingly, if you say, okay, what's some of the biggest threats in the infrastructure as, as a service? Well, you know, maybe China, Dave. You know, Alibaba's one that you look at there. Um, but huge opportunity for you know, what, what's happening at the edge. If you talk about intelligence, you talk about AI, to, to talk about machine learning, Google's actually the company that most people will talk about and kind of have a leadership. Heck, I've even seen discussion that maybe we need antitrust to look at Google because they're going to lock things up. Uh, you know, they have Android, they have Google Home, they have all these various pieces, but we know, Dave, they are far behind Amazon in, in the public cloud market, and Amazon has done a lot, especially over the last two years. You, you're right, I've been to every Amazon reInvent except for the first one, um, and the last two years really seen a maturation of that growth, not just, um, you know, devices and partnerships there, but how do they bring their intelligence and, and push that out to the edge? So uh, things like uh, their serverless technology, which is Lambda, they have Lambda Greengrass uh, that, that can put to the edge. Uh, serverless is pervading all of uh, their solutions. Uh, they've got like the Aurora it, database. And serverless is profound. I mean, not just from the standpoint of application development, but just an entire new business model is emerging on top of serverless, serverless and Lambda really started all that, but, but carry on. Yeah, and, and when you look in and you say, okay, what better use case than IoT for, well, I need infrastructure, but I only need it when I need it and I want to call it for when it's there. Uh, so that kind of model where I should be able to build by the microsecond um, and only use what I need, that, you know, that's something that you know, Amazon is at the forefront, you know, clear leadership position there, and they should be able to plug in, and if they can extend that out to the edge, start new partnerships, 
partnerships, uh, like the VMware partnerships, interesting. Red Hat's another partnership they have uh, with, with OpenShift to be able to get that out to more environments. And uh, Amazon has a tremendous ecosystem out there and absolutely is on their radar as to how they they're, push they're out it. the so, IoT. So we were at Google Next last year. Um, big push, verbally anyway, to the enterprise. And they've been making some progress. They're hiring a lot of people out of, you know, formerly Cisco, EMC folks that understand the enterprise. But beyond sort of the AI and sort of data analytics, what kind of progress has Google made relative to the leader? Um, so, in general, enterprise infrastructure service, they haven't made as much progress as most of us watching would expect them to make. But Dave, you mentioned something, data. I mean, at the center of everything we're talking about is the data. So, you know, in some ways, is Google, you know, come on, Google, they're smarter than the rest of us. They're skating to where the puck is, Dave. And infrastructure services, you know, last decade's uh, argument, if it's, you know, the, the data and the intelligence, you know, Google's got you know, just brilliant people. They're working at, you know, s some of these amazing environments. You look at things like Google Spanner. Uh, you know, this is distributed architecture. Say, how do I, you know, plug in all of these devices and help them work in a distributed, gradual work? Well, you know, heck, I'd be reading the white papers that Google's doing mm -hmm. and, and, and understanding that they might be really well positioned in this 3D chess match that we're Your playing. Your eyes might bleed. Yeah. I've read the Google <laughs> Spanner white paper. I was very excited about it and understood, you know, a little bit of it. Um, okay, let's talk about uh, Microsoft, they're, they're really, of, of the big cloud guys, Not what's, uh, they're really the, the one that has a partnership strategy to do both on-prem and, and public cloud. What are your thoughts on that now that sort of Azure Stack is starting to roll out with some key partners? Yeah, absolutely. It's the one that, you know, Dave, if you use your analogy, looking back, it's like, well, the, the, the next one, it's, it's gaining a little bit, gaining a little bit, but still far back. There is, is Microsoft. Uh, the, where Microsoft has done best, of course, is their portfolio of, you know, business applications that they have. Um, that they, They've really turned the green light on for enterprises to adopt SaaS uh, with Office 365. Um, Azure Stack, it, it's early days still, uh, but uh, you know companies that they, they use Microsoft, they trust Microsoft. Microsoft's done phenomenal working with developers over the last couple of years. Uh, very prominent, like the Kubernetes shows that I've been attending uh, recently. Uh, they've absolutely got a play for serverless that that we were talking about. Um, I'm not as up to speed as to where Microsoft sits uh, for kind of the IoT edge discussions. Um, you know, but you know they're playing there. Yeah, I mean, I, I, absolutely. I mean, you know, Microsoft does identity better than anyone. Active Directory is still the standard in enterprises today. Um, so, you know, it's. I, I worry that Microsoft could be caught in the middle. If, if Google's making the play for what's next, you know, Microsoft is still chasing a little bit uh, what what Amazon's already winning. Okay, um, and then we don't have enough time to really talk about China. Other than you mentioned it before, Alibaba's you know legit. Tencent, Baidu, obviously with their captive market, you know, in, in China, they're going to do a lot of business and they're going to move a lot of compute and storage and networking, but we'll maybe address that in another segment. I want to talk about the traditional enterprise players, Dell, EMC, IBM, HPE, Cisco, where do they stand? We talk a lot at Wikibon about true private cloud, the, the uh, notion that you can't just stick all your data into the public cloud. Um, Andy Jassy may disagree with that, but there are practical realities, and you're certainly, when you talk to CIOs, they, they, they underscore that. Um, but that notion of true private cloud hasn't allowed these companies to really grow. Now, of course, IBM and Oracle, I didn't mention Oracle, have a different strategy, and Oracle strategy is, is even more different, but so let's sort of run through them. Let's take the arms dealers, Dell EMC, HPE, Cisco, maybe you put Lenovo in there. What's their cloud strategy? Well, so first of all, Dave, I think most of them, they went through a number of bumps along the road trying to figure out what their cloud strategy is. Um, most of them, especially, let's take, if you take the compute or server side of the business, you know, they are suppliers to all the service providers trying to get into the hyperscalers. Um, most of them have, you know, they all have some partnership with Microsoft. There's Azure Stack, and they're saying, okay, hey, if I want an HPE server in my own data center and in Azure, Microsoft's going to be happy to provide that for you. Um, but <laughs> David, it, it, it's not really competing against infrastructure as a service. And you know, the bigger question is, you know, as, as that market has kind of flattened out and we kind of understand it, you know, where is the opportunity for them in IoT? We saw, you know, Dave, last five years or so, 
can I have a consumer business and an enterprise business in the same? HPE tore those two apart. Uh, Michael Dell has kept them uh, t together. Um, you know, IBM spun off to Lenovo, uh, everything that was on, on the more consumer side of the business. Um, you know, where will they play? Or, you know, will companies like, like Google, like Apple, the ones that, you know, Dave, they are spending huge amounts of money in, you know, chips, you know. <laughs> uh, look at Google and what they're doing uh, with, uh, you know, TPUs. Look at Apple, you know, they, uh, I believe it was, uh, there was an Israeli company that they bought and they're making chips there. Um, there's a different, need at the edge, uh, and sure, a company like Dell can create that, but will they have the margin, will they have the software, um, will they have the ecosystem to be able to, to compete there? Um, Cisco, I haven't seen on the, on, the, on the compute side them going down that path, but I was at Cisco Live and a big talk there. Um, I, 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 I really liked the opening keynote and we ha had a, a, a sit down on the cube uh, uh, with the executive. Um, it said, really, if I look out to like 2030, if Cisco's still successful and we're thinking about them, we don't think of them as a network company anymore. They are a software company, and therefore things like collaboration, uh, you know, things like you know how you know it's a kind of a, a new version of networking that's not on ports and boxes, um, but but really uh, as you know, I think about my data, think about my privacy and security. You know, Cisco absolutely has a play there. They've done some very large acquisitions in that space, um, and and they've got some deep expertise there. But but again. Dell, HPE, Cisco, predominantly arms dealers, obviously don't have an HPE at one point, had a public cloud, they've pulled back. HPE's cloud play uh, really is, is, is cloud technology partners that they acquired. Um, that at least gives them a revenue stream into the cloud. Now maybe it's, it's a consultancy. It's a consultancy. You know. Now maybe it's a one-way trip to the cloud, but I will say this about CTP, what it does is it gives HPE a footprint in that business and to the extent that they're a trusted service provider for companies trying to move into the cloud, they can maybe be in the catbird seat for the on-prem business. You know, but again, largely an arms dealer, it's going to be a lower margin business certainly than IBM and Oracle, which have applications. They own their own uh, public cloud uh, with the Oracle uh, public cloud and, and, and IBM cloud, formerly SoftLayer which was a $2 billion acquisition several years ago. So those companies from a you know, participation standpoint, even though tiny market shares compared to Amazon, Google, and Microsoft, they're at least in that cloud game, and they're somewhat insulated from that disruption because of their, their software business and their large install base. Okay, I want to sort of end with the, the sort of where we started, you know, the Peter Levine comment, cloud is dead, it's all going to the edge. I actually think the cloud era it's kind of, it's it's here. We're kind of, it's kind of playing out as we, as many of us had expected, you know, over the last five years. Um, you know what blew me away is Alexa. Who would have thought that Amazon would be a leader in this sort of natural language processing marketplace, right? You would have thought it would would, would come from so certainly Google with all the you know the search capability. You would have thought Apple. But Siri, you know, compared to Alexa. So my point is, Amazon is able to do that because it's got a data model. It's it's a data company. All these companies, including Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, the largest market cap companies in the world, they have data at the core. Data is foundational for those companies, and that's why they are in such a good position to to disrupt. So, cloud, SaaS mobile, social, big data. To me, Stu, these are kind of la the last 10 years. The next 10 years are going to be about AI, you know, machine intelligence, deep learning, machine learning, cognitive. We're trying to even get the names right. Uh, but it starts with the data. So let me put forth the premise and, and get your, your, your commentary and tie it back in the cloud. So the innovation in the next 10 years is going to come from data. And to the extent that your data is not in silos, you're going to be in a much, much better position uh, than if it is. Number two is your application of artificial intelligence, or, you know, whatever term you want to use, machine intelligence, et cetera. Data plus AI plus, I'll bring it back to cloud, cloud economics. If you don't have those cloud economics, then you're going to be at a disadvantage of innovation. So let's talk about what we mean by cloud economics. You're talking about the API economy. 
talking about global scale, um, always on. Very importantly, something we've talked about for years, virtually zero marginal cost at volume, which you're never going to get on-prem. Because this creates a network effect, and the other thing it does, from an innovation context, it attracts startups. Are startups saying, hey, I want to build on-prem? No, they're saying I want to build in the cloud. So it's data plus artificial intelligence plus cloud economics that's going to drive innovation in the next 10 years. What are your thoughts? Yeah, Dave, absolutely. Uh, something I've been saying for the last couple of years, we watched kind of the, the customer flywheel uh, that the public clouds have. Data is that next flywheel. So, you know, companies that can capture that. Uh, you, you mentioned Amazon and Alexa. You know, one of the reasons that Amazon can basically, you know, sell that as a loss is Lots of those people, you know, they're all Amazon Prime customers and they're ordering more things from Amazon and they're getting so much data that drive all of those other services. You know, where is Amazon going to threaten in the future? You know, everywhere <laughs> is, is basically what they see. Um, the piece, thing we didn't discuss that there, Dave, you know, I, I love your premise there, is it's technology plus people. What's going to happen with jobs? Uh, you and I did uh, the, did the sessions with Andy McAfee and Eric Brunjolfsson. It's racing with the machine. Where is, you know, we know that people plus machines always beat. So, you know, we spent the last five years talking about data scientists, you know, the, the, the growth of developers and, you know, developers and the new kingmakers. So, you know, what are those new jobs? What are those new roles uh, that are going to help build the solutions where people plus machine will win? And, you know, what what, what is that kind of next generation of work Force going to look well, like. I want to add to that, Stu. Was, I'm glad you brought that up. So a friend of mine, David Michella, just uh, is about to publish a new book called Seeing Digital. And in that book, I got an advanced copy, in there he talks about companies that, that have data at their core and with, with human expertise around the data. But if you think about the vast majority of companies, it's human expertise and the data is kind of bolted on. And the data lives in silos. Those companies are in a much more vulnerable position in terms of being disrupted than the ones that have a data model that everybody has access to with human expertise around it. And, and so when you think about digital disruption, no industry is safe, right. in my opinion. And every industry has you know, kind of its unique attributes. You know, obviously publishing and, and books and music have disrupted very quickly. You know, insurance hasn't been disrupted. Banking hasn't been disrupted, although blockchain is probably going to affect that. So, Again, coming back to this you know, tail end premise is the next 10 years is going to be about that digital disruption. And it's real, it's not just a bunch of buzzwords. A cloud is obviously a key component, if not the key component of the underlying infrastructure, with a lot of activity in terms of business models being built on top. All right, Stu, thank you uh, for your perspectives. Thanks for covering this. Um, we will be looking for this video, the outputs, the clips from that. Thanks for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. We'll see you next time.